Probably. Too many things I was looking at. Yeah. Um, okay, minutes from the previous meetings. Um, I'm going to suggest we make a motion to do them separately. Anybody want to make that motion? Well, then, okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have, a, I have an issue with the minutes from the joint meeting. Oh. <laughs> But you got them both in there, so I will try to get to it. Or do you have it handy, Bridget? I do. Okay. In regard to the two holidays, oh. the minutes state a voice vote was taken. It was not a voice vote. It was a roll call vote. So I think that needs to be clarified. I, I, I would agree. I'll make a motion to make that adjustment that don't we need um, the, the vote for the two separate committees? Yeah. A, re, a, record, a recorded vote that, and basically it was personal bargaining was a 5-0 vote. I just combined them both. Exec finance. But they were roll call votes. They weren't a voice vote. Okay. I think we started to do a voice vote, and then we decided that we, it required a oh, vote up, from separate it committees. Like it ended up 8-2, to it two, was but eight one to committee two. was 5-0, the other was 3-2. I think that should be clarified. Okay. I, I see a nod. Thank you. I, I just <laughs> want to show you that. Right, yep. Okay, we had a motion and we had a second, I believe, to make that adjustment. Any more questions, comments, changes? All in favor of approval with the change, say aye. 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 Carried. Uh, we have a public comment period. I don't see any phones around here yet, so phone in I don't know if it's an option yet. <clears throat> um, is there anybody? What's that? Not, Not live TV. We're, no. Anybody in the room? I don't see anybody for public comment. We'll leave it open for now in case somebody wishes to um, and move on to the county sales tax update. Um, our first payment for the new year it was $178,757.20, which is higher than either of the previous two years. So that's where we're at. Okay. Any questions on that? General fund update. Okay, we had some action in the uh, March county board meeting, and so we are now sitting at Two million eight hundred and sixty thousand four hundred dollars and seventy eight cents. Questions? Okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, department reports and requests. We have Corporation Council up first. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I submitted a year in review. I submitted a number of documents, so I'll try to go um, relatively quickly through those. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what some of the months of the responsibilities that we have under the statute and then kind of focus on um, some of the numbers and then um, probably more focus on the last part of this. So uh, as uh, you guys are aware, uh, probably a third to a quarter of, a, of my time is spent with human services. Uh, and so we did start a review of uh, the mental health numbers or the commitment numbers. I, for last year, there were 42 cases. I, within that, I, one thing that we are noticing is that, I, and, and this is pretty common, that when you count, the, you're only looking at case types and not necessarily including all the work that's been done on the existing cases. And so we're gonna start reflecting that for next year. 
Um, and, and so that's, you'll see a couple of notices. Um, that's true for guardianships as well, uh, because often you have things called return to more restrictives, not compliance with the orders and so forth. Um, I will say that this year has been quite busy. We're actually already up to at least 14. Um, so we're getting several a week, which is actually on par for a larger county. I'm not sure why, and it's cyclical. We might not get any in July. Well, we'll see. It's all part of the um, that's uh, for guardianships. Again, we are looking at how we are reflecting the work that's performed uh, with the fact that we have uh, a lot of existing guardianships and existing uh, guardians who are getting older. It is a trend that we are doing more and more successor guardianships. I've done several ever already since coming here, uh, and this is my six month day as of today. Uh, so uh, we are seeing that. Um, uh, and uh, minor guardianships, for whatever reason, have exponentially increased. I think that might be just a matter of house cleaning. But uh, since last year, prior to me coming, I, I think they had one for the, all of the year. I believe that I am now on six or seven. So, again, for whatever reason, it's, it's going... Um, we're, we're just having more of those. Uh, the bigger things you probably would be most interested in, if you go to the last page, uh, or second to last page, um, other types of matters, and Lori is here as well, and I included a lot of documents, and actually if I can hand out another one, because this was signed. Okay, thank um, you. And Rebecca, I think you got this. Yes, I did. This was signed by Lori Hanson, who is on the 22nd, and then published on the 23rd. It's a new tax law. I you got it. So, if you guys need an extra copy, are you good? Uh, this is going to change what the county does with its sales of, of property. It's going to force us to sell them much more quickly uh, rather than holding them on, and we have to sell them. I, you know, reasonably, we can't trade them. We can't do a straw man's deal if you're uh, sometimes in the past just to get rid of the property. It wouldn't surprise me if there would have been a, here, this little parcel, we'll give it to you for a dollar or something like that, because we want to get it back on the tax roll. This changes that. Um, also, in 2022, the, the tax law was changed in and of itself. There are some issues that this particular amendment uh, cleans up. It's actually good for many cases for the county. But to give you an idea, uh, I wanted to let you know, one, that it, this has happened. It's going to change procedure a little bit. We are going to have to amend our ordinance as well. So that will be coming up relatively soon, next month or two. Um, and we'll go through the channels for that, but we do need to amend it um, to reflect the most current, current law. And so you got, you got a whole bunch of things. You had the old law from 2022, you got the, the bill, and then it was just signed. So this is the act. Um, so that's going through. I don't think there's anything too exciting with junk. Um, child support, I know that uh, that's in the process of, of coming back to the board for reporting, but I just wanted to share that there's a lot going in child support. Uh, we had uh, 23 hearings last month, or this current month, excuse me. Uh, well, it's April 1st uh, in March. There's a bunch, and that's not including the ones that come off right before because all of the work to resolve it has happened. Um, and then what you might also be interested in is the opioid reporting. Uh, that first report went uh, on that NOAT 2 on February 14th, and those are the numbers that were for 2023. Uh, in addition, the state reporting, that information just came out in the last two to three business days, so that report's going to go out by April 22nd to the state. The report form is a little bit different. Um, and you might see uh, some additional funds finally coming in from those distributors, the Walmart, Walgreens, uh, CV, it should be CVS, sorry, not CVS, but CVS. Uh, that, those consent judgments were just signed in January. So we couldn't get any of those funds until the state had signed off. So, and as I said, we're gonna be looking at our reporting as we go forward just to better reflect the, the work that's being done. So I don't know if there's any questions about any of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you.
next one is, oh, there she is. I knew she was here. Ann <laughs> is up for land records. I knew we saw her. Did everyone get the report? Yep. There's a digital one and a hard copy. Per usual, the first page is always the data layers that we maintain. And then I went through the March 2023 to March 2024. Um, some things to highlight is we will finally be getting our LIDAR data back. Um, it's being processed for delivery in, in May. So after we get that, we'll have a user-friendly online application for, for people to use. And then we'll host learning sessions so people will learn how to use it. Um, we also got our our 2023 aerial flight onto our website. So um, you can see that now. We have, I think, the last five flights out there for people to view on our online mapping. Um, for NG911, I'm looking into a competitive grant to get some assistance to get our data ready. Um, I'll be attending an online workshop to help me uh, fill out that grant. And then I have our our numbers from our Beacon website. It's just interesting to see how many people are, are actually using our online site and not coming in to, to see us in person. Not that we mind that, but it saves them time and it saves us time. And some of the new projects that I've been, we've been working on. Um, I worked with the Village of Strum to, to update their trail maps, and I delivered posters to them um, for them to, to place throughout the, the, the trails. They have little spots for, for signage. Um, let's see, what else is fun and exciting uh, for me? Uh, <laughs> I created a culvert collection application for our county highway department for them to collect their culverts. And then I did one for the highway department to help collect township culverts. Um, and then I also helped the town of Burnside. I created their culvert collection application and, and showed them how to use it so they could do that on their own instead of relying on um, an outside vendor. Um, we, we've been assisting with um, snowmo snowmobile bridge applications those are some of the fun things we've we've done. Um, we did attend our um, Wisconsin Land Information Association um, conference in February. Uh, Nick was elected to be on the board. Nick also presented and won the best presentation at the conference. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so since January one, we've welcomed the county surveyor to the land records department. We're really looking forward to be able, being able to sit somewhere near him. Um, and one more thing that I'm be, going to begin working on along with the other departments within the Land Information Council is we're going to start our new year, our new three year plan. So we'll all sit down together and find projects and, and ways to spend our money. And then Nick had some um, legislative information at the bottom of that. And I don't pay attention to as much as he does. So if you have questions about that, you can certainly ask him. Um, I, the, this is the first time I've added this, but I did add our, our revenues and expenditures through the grants and the retained fees and the public access fees. Um, our grants are now being cut by $60,000 this past year. It's the lowest recordings they've had in 30 years, so that affects our, our grants. Um, and we're expected the same for next year, not to be cut, but just to stay at a lower amount. And then I put in a pie chart that shows, because pie charts are pretty, um, to show where most of our monies are going. <coughs> And that's all not non-levy money. That's all my grant and retained fees. Most of it's going to our software and our aerial flights and our LIDAR flights. 
Does anyone have questions? Just to the lower number of recording uh, numbers that's attributed to the online uh, opening more, so more people are going online to just do their yes. work rather yes. than, yes. yeah. Yep. Actually, it's the registered deeds documents, the recording of those. Oh, I, oh wait, are you talking about people coming in or are you talking about our you're talking about the lower the revenues. The revenues. Oh no, it's 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 because there's less um, legal documents. Legal documents, yep, yeah. Yep. I think we've talked about that. Yeah. And again that's that back to that they're doing more online. No. No. It's just lower because the interest rates are higher, so there aren't as many <laughs> ah. land sales or mortgages being recorded. Okay. Great, thank you. When you you know, you're still in this aerial LIDAR, uh, say in a couple of years when that all wraps up, will that large percentage go away or will you always be continuing that with something else? Right, right now for our aerial flights, we do it every three years, so okay. that will continue to happen. LIDAR, we've had, it, <coughs> this will be our second flight we just had, had done. Um, we got a lot of grant money from the USGS, I believe to help with that. And I'm assuming in the future, if we do have another flight, we'll also be getting some funding for that too. Any other questions? Thank you, Ann. Thank you. And then the next thing says, Paul has an update for us. Yeah, and I only have two things that you'll hear every time. We have an election tomorrow. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. Uh, we're all ready for it, I guess. I usually, on election day, do go out to a couple of polling places to see how they're doing it. And one of mine tomorrow is uh, town of Caledonia because they built a new hall. And I had to send them all new stuff because the new sign they had where all the notices were blew down. <laughs> so I said I wanted to see a new hall with a blown down building. So I was down there on Friday night and gave them all new notices and that. So uh, that's the, one of the places I want to go. And I wanted to hit one other one, but I haven't decided which one yet. But it's when I was down by Bridget and had fish. <laughs> the other thing is we are trying to get ready for the audit. The auditors don't come until the end of May, but they usually want all our information by the first part of May. So we're, we're working on that part, and that's about all I have. Any Question questions? for you, Paul. Sure. Um, back, I want to say, maybe three weeks ago, what was, wasn't there a snafu with absentee ballots and the printing? I was a little upset with our printers because uh, Command Central has the printing done in Missouri. And uh, we had 82 ballot styles. So there were 82 different ballots that had to be printed. And uh, we had one mistake on one ballot and they held up the whole thing. I said, you, couldn't you send me 81 so I'd only have one clerk mad at me instead of 26? <laughs> and so we were supposed to have them delivered by the third, what is it, that first, what is it, the 13th? No, it was the 11th, I think it was yeah, we had 11th. The the yes, and uh, I delivered them on the 13th. So we were keeping track and Man Central will hear it from me again, and I've talked to other county clerks that have the, kind of the same situation because all that stuff has to come from Missouri. It'd be nice if we had a printer right here in Wisconsin. And I know there's some big ones that I would think would be able to handle it, so. And who determines that? Command Central. And is that a federal entity or? No, no, it's just our, our uh, software program programmers and all that it's so like I said they'll they'll hear from me again they have before 
So, but I was talking to other clerks <clears throat> on Friday, actually, too, uh, that we've got to have something closer. So if something happens, we've also had, if there was an emergency, which we've had that happen where we might have run out of ballots, this time there's no way I'm going to run out of ballots. But uh, Command Central has printed them in, in house, which is up in uh, St. Cloud. And they've driven halfway. They come to Hudson, and I drive to Hudson to pick them up, so I don't have to drive all the way to mm -hmm. St. Cloud and, and get them. But that's still that's still a hassle. So, when you mention Command Central, I'm curious: is that a group of counties or county clerks that put this together, or is this a no, wing this of is, the state? This is or? a company. Uh, but who? You know, there's basically who there's con three. Who, who who ends up contracting? Who are they responsible to? That's where I'm looking. For. We have in, in Wisconsin, there's only three companies that are certified to do elections in, okay. in Wisconsin. Command Central, ESNS, and ClearVote. Okay. Two counties are with ClearVote. About 40 some counties are with Command Central, and then the rest of them are with ESNS. So I mean, the majority and of Wisconsin is Command Central. And we have a contract with them to receive and do the printing for the elections, or I don't know if, if we don't have a contract, can we explore other avenues? Well, if we explore other avenues, then we're going to have to get all new equipment, which is going to be a couple hundred thousand dollars if we're going to buy new voting machines. Okay, so they yeah. also supply all of that. Yep. Okay, got it. So that's that's always been my dilemma. Are they required by law to hold up all of them if one is erroneous? Mm -mm. No. We had all the stuff to them, boy, I think January almost. It was after the deadline. It was very early. I mean, they had plenty of time to get everything done. The only thing they had to hold up was the presidential, but they had that already too. So, I mean, it's just like, but. Um, Yes, we had one. We had one misspelling. Yep. yep. On a name, it was an S E N instead of an S O N. And then there. And then they that, had provided an additional name on the ballot. That we didn't have. That we did not have. And didn't give to them. So no. That's the one, and it happened to be in the city of Blair, which I thought, oh, great. But um, okay. that's where we're at on on all of that. As far as you know, everything is ready to go for tomorrow morning. Yep. Good. Anything they had else? to have all the absentees out by the, was it the 12th? The 13th. 13th. Yeah, yeah. So I delivered them on the day that they had to mail them out. And most of my clerks had the envelopes addressed, stamped, everything. They wanted to know how heavy the ballot was so that they knew they had enough postage. All they had to do was stuff the, everything into the envelope, and they were out. I think there were a couple of clerks that tried to jump the gun, so they went and uh, photocopied the ballot and mailed out. Those they're going to have to hand count. So. Yes, and that, that was one of the concerns with having a printed ballot and then having to turn around and hand count it and a did lot not of, sit well with the voters who utilize the absentee ballot system. There you go. And that's the one thing I told my clerks, too, because the state lets you remake a ballot, you know, when you get that paper, because it's, it's just on paper like this, uh, that the clerks are, or the inspectors and all that, are allowed to then remake that ballot onto a regular one so that it'll go through the machine. And I told them I didn't want that to happen, that you're going to count that paper ballot. I don't want you getting accused of, okay, I voted for so-and-so on my paper ballot, but on the, my cardstock one, it was somebody else because they could easily change the, and I didn't want that. So they are counting those by hand. Very good. Anything else? Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. You bet. Item 9, proposal for comprehensive review of financial systems and processing. 
Uh, so you have uh, a proposal that's from Government Solutions LLC. I've also given you a um, extra piece of paper here today that just has a couple of reviews from individuals that shared. Oh, um, oh thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you should have this one too. Yeah. So the, just to give you a little overview, I'm interested in get our, getting a better understanding of all of our financial systems and the procedures that are in place. I'd like, um, I've, I've spoken with this uh, group. It's two individuals. One is a retired, um, one is a retired county administrator also finance director for a community in the past, and then uh, the other individual is more in uh, the actual um, finance background. And so anyway, was hoping for them to come in and uh, give me a better idea of our standing so that I can better communicate that as we go into budget season. Um, we have, uh, during our work. Uh, I'd started working with Jen Kamu out of the health department. There's some ARPA funding that's specific to the health department that can be used uh, for its ARPA funding that can be used for overall uh, systems improvements for the county that will help their department but also help the county overall. So I've um, got a proposal in front of you and would be using those funds to pay for this as well as um, contracting with a finance director that um, we can have work with our department heads on budgeting as we go into the season. There are individuals that have expressed some interest in, in having a little bit more background knowledge and, and learning about uh, budgeting and so that individual then would be uh, used specifically for that and as we go into again budget season. Um, so these funds are um, were allocated several years ago uh, and the Department of Health Services is requiring uh, counties that haven't designated the use of the funds yet to specify how the funds will be used by April 12th. And so I've been working with Jen and Lynn in health services to put that plan together on how the funds will be used. Part of it is through this. And, and when I put the, the uh, overall cost for the 18.5 here, I also built in an extra 10,000 for contracting out um, with either this group or another individual as I spoke with that could do more one-on-one -on -one with department heads and working with us. And so we do have leeway in the funding from uh, the health department. So we don't know actual costs. Like I had talked to uh, Supervisor, Supervisor Larson about the travel mileage piece on here. Uh, it's That's a minimal cost that we don't exactly know uh, specifically what that will be, but it's expected to be $1,000 or less. Um, but I have built in that extra 10000 that's to be used for um, contracting with, you know, an outside individual to work with us. So, um, and um, even though we're specifying the use of the ARPA funds through the health department, we do have the ability to move that a bit. So we're going to specify that by April 12th. But if we have to take some of the funds in the health department area that we're setting aside for one purpose, we can move it into another area that we're using. So that's, that's kind of the overall plan and thinking about how we use those ARPA funds to benefit the county overall as well. So I just wanted to share that with you so that you're aware and I'll bring this to the county board also for uh, for just uh, aware, but if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer anything that you may I'll have. I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go towards Paul. Ryan Rapke, the firm he's with. Ryan Rapke. Ra or whom, am I think Ryan, um, do I have the wrong name? No, this is our judge. <laughs> the guy we use from the cities. 
Oh, right. Brian, 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 Brian. 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 Yes. How did that come up for a minute? Judge Chambers. Brian, Brian, Riley. Riley Chambers. So he would be similar <laughs> to an advisor. No, he just does. But we end up during our, when we get into our financing and borrowing and stuff, we use him. Yeah. And we yeah. probably spend that same amount of money with with him that this advisor would be. I guess that's my question. Oh, we spend a lot more. With yeah, I was so going to say, okay. yeah. this is, doesn't yeah. seem to be near the long. So, I mean, this would kind of cover part of those. He'd be able to answer some of those questions if we're going to be, not really. No. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is more, because I have spoken with Brian as well, and so I am working with him on more of the borrowing piece. Oh, you are yeah. actually working with yeah, him right now. Yeah, I am now. working so with him also. this will be over and above that. Right, okay. right. This is, this is something separate. And to totally come in, um, look at our systems also, um, you know, for efficiencies and, right. and things uh, on our procedures and how... Um, yeah, just and so I think this is a deeper dive into the whole budgeting process. Okay. Um, and so I just to share the I do have a couple of uh, people that I gave you um, I had reached out to that are working with government solutions or have worked. So uh, Kristen Corpella from Dunn County, she's their county manager there. Uh, she's working with them right now and spoke very highly of them. Um, they're working on financials with their highway system and, and again, how our systems are working together across all those areas of, is of interest. Uh, very, uh, you know, just stating that, um, you know, they work primarily remote and that's the piece that they're, you know, had talked about maybe one time coming in and and uh, that's that travel cost, but otherwise they'll mostly work remotely with us. Um, and again, um, and then also the um, Dan Grady County Administrator in Ashland County, they've also done the same thing and um, you know, found some ways to um, increase transportation aids and things so that they can recommend some of those things to us as well as um, both have commented that, you know, and I was quite surprised, both of them commented that the price on this is very reasonable and I would agree in saying that I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I thought that that was a quite reasonable cost to do that. If, okay, so looking at your, the project timeline mm -hmm. for this, so, the estimated date, so let's say uh, on-site work is two days and it turns out to be four because they didn't maybe realize the full scope of what they needed to delve into. How much can this other price go up? Obviously that changes hotel meals, whatever, a minimal portion, but is there something in here that could make that 18 and a half thousand dollars jump up to all of a sudden now 22 24 even i think at that rate it would be reasonable i think this is a necessary component for the villa or for the county to to look into all of these finances and you know where we're where we can improve Right. I think um, I think I will just speak from having um, had quite a few conversations with uh, Steve, who is uh, listed on here, the managing member for the uh, government solutions. He's done quite a bit of work already in just all of our online information so that he wanted to feel comfortable before he said yes. Uh, and they're both retired, like I said, so they only pick certain projects that they want to work with. And uh, his, his uh, real uh, goal then was to have that ready to go by the May um, uh, county board meeting so that although, um, I don't know here, he has that, I wonder if that's a typo. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, project start date 4-8. And so um, it were, really was uh, looking at making sure that we were, uh, we had this information before we went into the budget cycle. I was, I started looking at the end dates here instead of start dates, so I was confused. Um, so I, I think he's got a good handle. If it did, again, if it did go a little bit high, we do have that ability within the ARPA funds to use other funds, but I don't, I don't think that we're going to have, we're going to see that in just uh, my conversations with them to date and that they've given us, you know, a, a price already, so. Point, point being, it's, it, you're talking about all ARPA funds no matter where this, with, within reason, no matter where this goes. Correct. Right. But just a point of interest. In ARPA funds we've been talking. No, no, no. It's totally That's separate what I was from the say. one. This isn't. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't Correct. our ARPA funds. Right. This is the health department's right. ARPA yep. funds. Yep. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right. They were having trouble finding a place to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This you know, doesn't. I don't even know if it has to go to full board because it's. But at least. I just thought I would share it. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it you isn't anything. There's no approval really needed, but I just wanted everybody to be aware that that's going to be happening. I can't remember. What was the total amount? Mm -hmm. Rebecca, what was the total amount that health department had? 421000 I knew it was right. over $400,000. Right. Yeah. And so in looking at those funds as well, we're looking at our um, whole health uh, human resource information system and and hopefully using some of the funds for that, which is an allowable use as well. So plus a number of other uh, items that Jen will be presenting today to the health department okay. board. So uh, we'll go through them first and then we can bring that to the county board just for sharing as well once, uh, once the health department board has taken a look at that. Isn't this the year that all funds have to be accounted? Or by, the, what you're by the end of this year, year. Yeah. Yeah. the ones that we have, yeah. and if, if it goes as planned, <laughs> I'm gonna say it that way, um, that will be designated at county board this month, the rest of ours. It's the next thing on the agenda to talk about here, right? Yeah, number. This needs to be determined, though, by April 12th for, and oh, for, money spent before the end of the year for the health department okay. funding. Number 10 on your agenda. Yep, that's the next one. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, okay, any more questions on... That I guess item? my report got longer. No, two no, that's <laughs> incorporated into yours. Do we need a motion to just no. vote for no. this? No. Just information. Okay, moving on to item 10, resolution regarding funding for, funding for courthouse renovation. Okay, um, you should all have that yeah. resolution. Yeah, I saw it so if it's not in it's your... It's not in your pack. The, the paper packet that I gave it's you... It's on your computer. I think John borrowed mine and didn't give it back, so I didn't make copies. Oh. Well, do you have it in your pack, <laughs> in your paper? <laughs> no, I said, look at this, because uh, Susan sent it back to me with some corrections on it. I did that, and I said, John, now read this, and it didn't come back to me. So. You sure? Uh huh. That's kind of like that red book that hasn't shown up well, again. I Anyway, I can read it to you if you want to. <laughs> yep. Probably not. Okay. I didn't on. find it anything here. I've got it. It should be on your in your packet packet on your computer. On the right? computer I've got, but I didn't find any piece of paper. No, no, no right, because I didn't I, get that. I was, I was no. I she was gone on, on Friday, and we finished it up on Friday. And <laughs> but I, I can read it to you. you it's right not real up. long. You got January's. Ten. Oh, that's three, 326. Okay. That's the one I'm in. Looks good to me, and you'd already made some corrections. I don't know why it's No, I don't think you did. Susan's in the Susan. Oh, wait. Here, let's, let's try this. Oh, okay. this one's good. Do you want me to read it to you? Yeah, go start yeah. reading. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. It's designating available funds towards the courthouse renovation project. Whereas Trumple County is completing the new 
Justice Center construction project, and whereas the new Justice Center construction cost used almost all of the bond dollars designated for the new Justice Center and the renovation of the existing courthouse in 2023. And whereas there are funds in various accounts that could be designated <coughs> for the renovation of the old courthouse, and whereas some of these accounts that have available funds that could be used must have those funds designated for specific uses before the close of, the, of 2023 or will be rolled into the unassigned general fund. That might be a tickler there because some people say just put it in there and we'll use it later, but so we've got to watch that part. Uh, now be it resolved that the available funds listed below be designated by Trumplow County Board of Supervisors for courthouse renovation and placed in account 401.57141.823 courthouse renovation. And then it's the accounts, the 101.48100, that's interest. Investment interest over budget was $826,943.12. Also in interest is the, the uh, 2023 ARPA interest, which is $288,668.70. And then also the LATCF interest. Same, the same information. I have in the, um, yeah, I again, in the interest account, $3,723.33. Then we have the 101.11300 unallocated ARPA funds, $1,787,523.58. And also in investments is the LATF, LATCF funds of $100,000, and then in the 101.41221 sales tax over budgeted of 400, second to start working, uh, $482,139.45 for a total of $3,488,998.18. Be it further resolved that when any contingency balances from the new Justice Center project and the pending ODIP funds are finalized, they be brought into the Trimple County, brought to the County Board, Trimple County Board of Supervisors, introduced by Executive Committee. So, yeah, first thing Thank John you. said when he read it is he thought it was closer to four million. Well, it would be if we had the technical dollar figure left from the Justice Center, which um, Samuel said was about 300,000, and um, the, uh, Wisconsin County Mutual is estimating that our uh, refund from ODIP is about 200,000. So that's about 500 more thousand dollars. You could add to that. Anybody interested in making a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. No, oh, second. Okay. Any other discussion? So at the end where it says, be it further resolved, mm -hmm. that those funds would be brought for designation? Because that money will be in 24, so I don't have to worry about right. it going back to the general fund until but the end But is that of an automatic that it gets designated to the no, courthouse be renovation? No, back to the county board for designation. For designation, yes. For whatever. whatever yep. Or for whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, that, don't know that was my concern. It's like, in. okay, anything else that's coming in automatically? No. Okay. Nope. Nope. Any other questions? Uh, my only other question was I thought that possibly they, we were going to hold off on this until the new board comes in. I mean, well, I don't know how the dates. in at the next county board meeting, but I, I know. I don't know how the, the dates line up and how that would affect all this, but I, I had just heard that that was potentially one of the options. And it is. We we could wait another month, so that new board members would have a chance to kind of. So we could do a report, I suppose, at this meeting. Still, our board meeting. We would still be able to get another 23 funds. Yeah, because we won't close them until end of June, July is when okay. we close the books. It might be, I'm just um, thinking it might be nice to have, because it has to be approved again, it's not, you know, this um, might be good to have a, a show of support 
from this group of individuals going into the next group and then you still have to have support, um, but it would be good to maybe show that uh, what support there is already. Just a comment, there's two for sure and possibly four, right? New, new members? Three for sure. Oh, three for sure. Oh, okay. And then potentially and possible five. five. Six. Six. Well, because we got oh, three. Oh, no, six. Yeah, three we have races, three. three. Oh, and goodness. we have three. Yeah, you're right. So three that seats is. that are, it's six. Yeah. That's right. Eleven. No, you're ten. Us two 11. and Jeannie have competition. Yeah. Right. That would be the three That's races. The three. Right. But the ones that were considered open seats would be Dan Schreiner's and... Um, David, David Orsch and, and Emery Palmer. Emery Palmer. Oh, Emery. Yeah, Three. Okay. Yeah. But we already know who's replacing there. Yeah, and deadline for registered write-ins was at noon on Friday, last Friday. So nobody's going to be counted if 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 somebody gets a thousand votes, they won't be counted because <laughs> they're not registered. And I'm happy that nobody on the state or federal had any registered write-ins either. And then, and this wouldn't come before the full board until the April meeting, any, anyway. That's this month, yeah. This month. So, oh, this April. We're in April. Yeah, in April. We're, we're at that point. It's <laughs> already. The first could, already. It could be but two, we could have two weeks from maybe now. in, in your report to the county board. Mm -hmm. Rebecca's right. report could be talk about this so that people have it on their radar, and then not vote on it until May, which is still okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, just, so what was it you said? I, I may have missed a word. Your last statement. What? What was my last? <laughs> Can you rerun that? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could have been in Rebecca's report, and then you vote on it on me. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Oh, okay. Because rather than vote on it here on a yes no. Well, we can vote on no, it. No, we can vote on, on it here. Okay. And then we're just mm -hmm. recommending it. At this it's point. just the yeah, yeah, the very beginning of yeah. the. But that and the, the new it, board members forward. that have their first meeting in April wouldn't be voting on it in April. Then they'd hear about it in April, and, and then vote in May. But then, in right. order to vote today, don't we have to change the? Uh, to a recommendation rather than the vote. The, the you, motion was made to approve this. You could, would you could approve on. this resolution with a stipulation that it'll go to okay, May instead of April. We have to stipulate that it right. doesn't go on yeah. other than a report. Is that where we're, is that what we want? Or? That's kind of what I was hearing here. That to be um, right. Do I need to make a motion to amend the original? Um, I'll make that motion to amend the original motion that it be a recommendation well you I'll could approve this resolution is what you're going to be doing isn't that what your motion is right now to approve, approve this resolution? resolution and i think oh, her so amendment would be just to add that it won't board, go to county board until may mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you can amend it so that you approve it today and then it will go to county board next may in in may in may next month yeah, yeah. i don't need yeah, well, I don't need to necessarily do that either, do I? Well, you should do that part because that's not in this resolution right. about. Okay. Because okay. you're going to be approving it now okay. on the first, and but we're not going to send it to county board till the next month. So, so I'll so amend the motion to send to to send this on to committees and county to board. No, see just the county board. Oh, board. it doesn't need to go anywhere. Because you're the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's. A, so that this resolution co can go to the full county board in the May meeting. Yeah. Yeah. To be voted That's on in May. Right. Okay. Is there a second to that amendment to the motion? I can second that. Okay. Questions? Everybody follow where we're going? Yes. Okay. We're voting on the amendment to the original. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now, are we ready to vote on the amended motion? Yes. Okay. All in favor of the amended motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried.
His resolutions are getting more confusing. I, they are. <laughs> <laughs> every t- Seems like every day one of them. But it's good we have Susan here. She keeps us all straight. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is why I t- can t- tend to keep repeating myself. What are we saying? <laughs> <laughs> Item 811, discussion slash action on the allocation of ARPA funds. I think we've kind of covered that, too, You don't have point. any anymore, Al. Yeah, this yeah. resolution goes through. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. FEMA funds. Uh-huh. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty soon we're just going to have to take it off because... We haven't even seen anything of our administration, which we were told we will get administration reimbursements, and I haven't seen. So when's the last time we've contacted that firm that Um, did that work for us? It's probably been a while now because, uh, what was the girl's name? You wouldn't even know it was before. What's her name? Not Olivia, the other, Megan. Megan no longer works for them. So we got assigned to another person and I've talked to them. So was it still at the end of last year since we've been in direct contact? Because it's kind of the squeaky wheel yeah, gets the grease. If we continue it's probably to, been the end of last year, yes. If we continue to, to press the issue with them and make sure that they, we get in front of the line, so to speak, I think that we could get some traction on it, but if they never hear from us, they're just gonna figure, yeah, no. Well, the last they told us was we were gonna get the administration back and they and, were working on the rest of it. And we haven't, didn't. and we haven't seen or heard from them. So my I, recommendation would be to, to press with that yep. And, yep. and press them as hard as we can because I, that's what we were promised and I mean, yes. one can wonder that when their funding is gone to, does that make for a dissolution of their company? Or, you know, could we never get any response then? I don't know what else they do, but maybe they got in the business because this was a good gig and... I have a note, I'll probably have Rebecca in on this too, because. I was just gonna say, I would like to get caught up on that. And yes. then it, the, and the, the group is called Integrity. Okay. And, and they're the in Florida. The, okay. The and they do, they this is what they do, is the, the FEMA stuff for natural yeah, disasters. Maybe we could meet things. on that after, and then I could also um, reach out to, during administrators' meetings, and ask other counties what, what's happened kind of on their end. So the other thing I'd like to see change is, is in, this in that report, they said we were closed and we were never closed. Yep. And that probably affected the results from FEMA that, well, they weren't doing anything anyway. Mm. Yeah, so, so there's a couple of things going on there that I think that we should have been reimbursed more for. And oh, I think if yes. the longer we I think let I it lie you those and do nothing, paper in, my, in John's office, anything in red was denied by the feds. I mean, but there was they all a lot. That we were closed. We never did close. And the longer that I think that that sits idle, mm-hmm. the less chance that we have to garner any more funding from that. We'll get a hold of it. Yeah. yeah, Paul and I will work on that. Okay. <laughs> oh, then we got the. Nothing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Get your list out, right? Item 13, the uh, LATCF grant funds. I think that again, if, if this resolution can handle that too. goes in May, we won't put that back on anymore. Yep. So, item 14, set time and date for the next meeting. Looks like May 6th. May 6th? Anything else from anybody? I hope Doc and I will still see you guys. We do. We do too. Well, it'll all depend on who. Well, it wouldn't make any difference even if we get on. We don't know if we're going to be on the same committee. Well, John's been working on it already, so he's planning on becoming the chair. Why are you 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 coming back? (laughs) Of course, it doesn't mean I'll be back. (laughs) (laughs) So be nice to him for a while. Okay, well, I will adjourn the meeting at 
Let's put my glasses on so I can see it. Nine twenty-six. Nine twenty-six. 